Hello, everyone. Welcome back uh, to another session of PIM Summit 2023. Next, we have an amazing speaker. She's Amruta Deshmukh. Uh, she's a, so a senior software engineer at Trevor, and she will present uh, the next session called Case Study Using Stateful Do Defense to Process Late Arriving Data. Welcome, Amruta. Hi. Good morning, everyone. So today we are actually here to talk about enriching late arriving data with some metadata that we have using some stateful processing. Now, uh, uh, to just give you like we have in this session, I will start with introducing myself, then tell you a little bit about my company, after which I can give you a brief overview of our system architecture that we have, and then we can talk about the specific use case that we have. To start with, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm Amrita Deshmukh, as uh, you already been introduced to. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Striver, and I've been a part of the data platform team. Uh, now, I've been working at Striver for the past three years, and my team is majorly responsible for building various data pipelines, uh, which process the data real time, and then ensure the easy and efficient retrieval of this process data both by internal teams or by external customers, et cetera. Now, uh, to give you a little introduction about Striver as well, uh, Striver basically is an immersive learning platform. Immersive learning is actually a VR training methodology where you can train your workforce using a VR experience. Uh, Striver provides end-to-end -end solutions for immersive learning at scale, which includes both provisioning the hardware, which is the VR headsets, then developing training for those headsets, and then collecting data from these different trainings and providing valuable insights, which is where the data team comes in and plays an important role in processing all the data that we've received and then making it available processing it and then making it available to both the customers and the internal teams. Now, here is a bird's eye view of our architecture. As I mentioned, we have VR headsets we, where people train on. And then from there, we upload multiple files associated with these trainings, like event files and everything. And then we upload them to GCS buckets. Uh, and we have uh, uh, basically uh, uh, in the form of files, as I mentioned. And then we have PubSub notifications set up on these buckets where once these buckets, once these files are uploaded, we get PubSub notifications. And then we process these files in real time using uh, Beam pipelines, which are running on data flow. Finally, once when the data is processed we uh, with and, we, and enriched with some information, we write it to like different things that we have. Either it's Druid or we, uh, we have our data warehouse, which is based off of Google Cloud Storage. And then finally, we also have uh, Google PubSub where uh, if we have to do some further processing on these events, that is where we are going to read uh, the events from. So... Now to give you a little background on the use case that we're talking about today. Uh, so as part of immersive learning, we also provide soft skills training where you, you know, it's like for different customer facing roles. For example, it training an employee on how to dealing with a disgruntled customer. So that would involve sort of like a live uh, voice uh, training. So as part of this training, we collect first as I mentioned, a file which contains various events related to the training, such as various head tracking events, hand tracking events, and then also the dialogue related events like speech started or speech ended and everything. Uh, along with that, we also collect the audio files, which contain the employee's speech that they've used during the uh, training. Now, using these two files, we can generate some voice analytics, like what is the average word count that different employees use for such type of scenarios, what is the response duration, the speech rate, or, or how many filler words are used and all of that. So that is the background for this particular use case. Now that we know the background, now let me tell you a little bit about the problem statement. Uh, so we as I mentioned, 
we generate voice metrics based off of these audio files, which is number of words and uh, speech duration or the amount of uh, pauses that people have taken during this training, etc. Uh, we use Google speech to text API to transcribe this audio and then we generate the metrics. Then we need what we need to do is these metrics need to be appended to the voice events that I spoke to you about, like which are collected in the events files uh, so that these event files are then enriched with all of these metrics and we can finally have them uh, in our in our various things which can be used by by customers so now the problem uh, with this situation is that the time and order of the upload of the events file and the audio files cannot be controlled it is possible that we first receive the events file and we process all the information but the audio files which are related to this particular training are not yet uploaded so there is no way to uh, merge the metrics and there is no way to do this real time in the pipeline itself so that is where uh, so that is where we have the proposed solution which is we what we did was we created two separate pipelines one of the pipeline is for the event processing uh, this basically uh, it would read uh, it would read all the events, process it, and uh, basically attach it with uh, metadata. And what this pipeline would do is uh, it would uh, publish the events down, publish the events to uh, the voice related events to PubSub. As I mentioned, that is also one of our things. Then what we did is we built another pipeline, which would read all the audio files, generate all the voice metrics that are associated with it by transcribing all the audio files. And the second pipeline would also be responsible for reading the voice events, which were published by the voice pipeline. And this pipeline would then use the stateful processing by store, use stateful processing to join both the voice event and the voice metrics. So, uh, this basically we do we do the stateful processing by storing both the event and the metric in memory for an hour and merging both of these the voice event and the voice metrics that is that have been generated um, so for this process we used the beans state and timer apis to record the state of the event and the voice metrics and we made use of some of basically the read modify write state spec class which we have to capture the state of um both the voice metric and the voice event. In order to capture the state, we just implemented a custom coder uh, and uh, for both the voice metric, voice event dictionary that we have and the voice metrics dictionary. Uh, this particular class is available in the Python uh, SDK that for Beam. So now I'll give you, I'll show you like just a brief architecture of what I just spoke about. So we have the events file and the audio files both stored in the GCS bucket. Then we have a, a Beam uh, pipeline, which is run on data flow for which processes the voice events, which processes all events basically. And then uh, specific voice related events, they are published to PubSub. And from there, what we have is uh, we have another pipeline, another Beam pipeline running on Dataflow, which reads all of these voice related events. Along with that, what this pipeline also does is it is reading the audio files from a different pub subtopic and then transcribing them, generating the metrics. And then what it's doing is storing both the voice event and the voice metrics uh, in, uh, in memory. And then within an hour, basically, if you find a match for a particular voice event, you find a match for a metric, you join them. Or if you have a particular metric and you find an event, a voice event that comes in, you join it and then you publish it down to different things like either PubSub or you write it to Druid or a warehouse or everything. Uh, I also have attached some sample code, uh, which I'll share. And I can show you how we've done this in the Python, uh, in our Python code. So uh, I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, So as I mentioned, we have implemented, we basically implemented custom coders for the particular dict. So as you can see, there is a class for the voice metric, which contains the audio file, the transcription, duration, everything, words per minute spoken, word count, everything. And then we have the voice event, which is the event related to the training, which has the event ID and the 
audio file that it is related to, the login ID, device ID, everything. Now, as you can see, we have a do funct here, uh, basically, which is going to do the joining. So in this, as you can see, we first defined the custom state spec for the voice metric using the coder, and then for the, uh, the event using the specific coder that we have defined on top. And then we also have like the maximum timestamp uh, for, I mean, what is the uh, timestamp for each of these that you have seen? And uh, yeah, and then the, the 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 timer, which is like an hour for which fires, if within an hour you don't see a matching event for either the voice metric or the voice event, and then it will just fire an incomplete join, and that will be written to our uh, dead letter queue or whatever. Now here, as you can see, is you write the voice metric state uh, or you write and you write the dialogue event state. And then if you find both the metric and the event, you generate the dialogue voice metrics. And finally, you flush out the state for the metric and the event because you've joined them and you finally yield the result to basically to write to our sync. Else what you see is that if you've reached the maximum timestamp, then you just set the expiration date and you write the in so in case of an expire you fire this callback and what you do is you write the incomplete event either it's the metric or the dialogue event and then you just write it to the dead letter queue or you just tag it as an incomplete event and which is finally written by to our dead letter queue so this was the use case and this is how we used uh, the we used stateful processing to enrich data for late arriving events or metrics in either case uh, so that's everything from my side does anyone have any questions?